Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you're having a good holiday season, but don't forget your daily dose of neat code. So today let's solve a reorganized string. This is a pretty solid and even somewhat unique problem. So we're given a string s and we want to rearrange the characters of s so that any two adjacent characters are not the same. So that's a pretty simple explanation. If only the solution were as simple. And by the way, if it's not actually possible to do that, we have to return an empty string. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's look at these examples. So if we had two A's and one B, that's pretty simple. We'd put an A first, then a B, and then an A. In this case, no two adjacent characters are the same. And we already, from this first example, learned something important. It's probably better to start with the most frequent character. So in this case, A is more frequent, right? We have two A's and we have a single B, so it's probably better to start with the more frequent character. Because if we did it the opposite way, if we started with a B and then all we have left are two A's, we put one A and then we have to put the second A after. In this case, both of these are the same character and they're adjacent to each, each other, so this doesn't work. We have to, you know, make them non-adjacent. So if we want to be able to find the correct solution, we have to start with a more frequent character probably. Now the second example is basically a case where there's nothing we can do, right? But we start with the most frequent character, which is A, uh, and then we, you know, put a B because we can't reuse A. And then we have two spots left, both of them are A, and we can't really not have them adjacent to each other. So in this case, it just doesn't work. Okay, so we know we want to start with the most frequent character, but what's the general algorithm that we can use? I mean, what if we had something like this? Something like this. And by the way, the way we're actually going to be building this is using a hash map. Uh, because of course, we're actually given the input as a string, but what we really want to do is just count the occurrences of each character, and we can do that pretty easily with a hash map. But is a hash map going to be enough for us? So how would we rearrange these? Well, of course, uh, we'd want to start with the most frequent one, so that's pretty easy to do. We'd find that A is the most frequent. There's three of them, so we start with A. Okay, what goes next? Well, does it really matter if we put B or C next? So we can put a B first, right? And by the way, let's keep track of how many we have of each. So if we use an A, we have two A's left. If we use a B, we have one B left. And now let's just use a C, right? Because intuitively it kind of makes sense we could put we started with a first okay we put a b then we put a c uh, and then why not just redo the exact same thing that we just did let's just cycle through each character right first do a then do b then do c and just keep doing it like that until we run out so a b c that's going to leave us with one a zero uh, B's, zero C's, and then we're left, you know, just one A, so then we just put the A at the end. So that worked. Is that going to be an approach? Because that's one of the first ideas I had when looking at this problem. Let's just do, let's just start with the most frequent character and then just do one of each character. Is that going to actually work? Can you think of a counterexample where that won't work? I can, and let me show it to you. So this is the counterexample. Let's just do the same thing that we did. Start with A, it's the most frequent, then put a B, then put a C. So now we are left with two A's, zero B zero C's and then we put another A uh, and we have one A left and then we have to put another A and that doesn't work right so in this case what our current algorithm would do is say okay there's not a solution let's just return an empty string but that wouldn't be correct because there is a solution let me show it to you we could put A then put B then put another A then put C and then put another A right? This does work. And this is the solution. And by the way, of course, A, C, A, B, A also works. And thankfully, they say that we can return any valid string. So either of these solutions would be fine. Uh, but how come our algorithm couldn't figure this out? Because we're kind of cycling through each of these. Is there a better approach that would have worked for this to actually have created this? In this case, actually, the simple algorithm works. Just taking the most most frequent character each time will work for us, except there's a small catch. So let's try that. Let's try always taking the most frequent character and see what happens. Okay, right now A is the most frequent character, so let's use an A. Uh, and now A is once again the most frequent character. So that actually doesn't work either, or does it? Because we know if we try taking the most frequent character again, which is an A, we're going to get two consecutive A's. That's not exactly what we want. But 
we can basically put this value on hold for a while. We just used an A, so we're gonna say, okay, find the most frequent character that's not A, basically everything except for A. So doing it like that will work. Just putting a hold on the previous element that we just used is actually exactly what we need to do. So now from either of these, we could take either one B or C because they're both uh, have the same count. So let's just choose B. So we'll be left with zero Bs. Okay, now we are once again allowed to use this A. So what's the most frequent now? Is it the C or the A? Of course, it's the A. So let's put A here. Uh, and then if we do that, there'll only be one A left. I'm trying to figure out a way to make this clean. Uh, hopefully it is. So there's one A left. Okay. Uh, but now the A is on hold again, right? So if the A is on hold, then we only have one element remaining, which is the C and there's exactly one of it. So uh, let's put the C here. And now the A is no longer on hold, so we can take the last A and then put it at the end. So that's actually the whole algorithm. But what you're seeing is we're implementing this with a hash map. So by doing that, how are we gonna be able to find the most frequent uh, element in a hash map. We're basically going to have to scan through it every single time. And we're also going to have to keep track of which uh, previous value uh, we use so that we don't reuse the same value two times in a row. Uh, but the time complexity, doing that with a hash map scanning through it each time is going to be uh, roughly n squared in the worst case, but technically the size of the hash map is actually going to be uh, 26 because I think we're only going to have A through Z. So the actual algorithm would be 26 of N. And I don't know if this gets accepted on leak code or not, because there's actually a slightly more efficient way, which is a little bit more extendable in the general case where we could have more than just A through Z. And that's basically to find the most frequent. There's a very uh, helpful data structure to do that, which is called a heap. Uh, in this case, we're going to want a max heap because if we want the most frequent, we are going to you know, want the maximum count. That's what a max heap will do. Instead of scanning through the entire thing, basically a max heap would do it in log n time. So if this uh, the size of this was n, we would be able to get the maximum in log n time. It's basically a data structure that can kind of replace sorting for us. So that's really good. The only downside is I'm gonna be doing this in Python and Python actually doesn't come with a default max heap. So what we're actually gonna to do to simulate a max heap, we're gonna use a min heap, but we are gonna basically replace the counts with negative values. So for example, this would be negative three, negative one, negative uh, one. So we're gonna pop the minimum from here, which is gonna be uh, this. So when we pop the minimum, we're actually getting the most frequent uh, character. And instead of you know decrementing the count, we're going to be incrementing it so that it becomes negative two, and then it'll become negative one, and then it'll eventually become zero. And that's how you know we don't have any of them left over. I wish Python had a built-in max heap, uh, but if you're using Java or something, it'll probably be a little bit easier to implement this. But okay, now let's get into the solution. Uh, and by the way, the overall time complexity in the general case where we don't have just A through Z characters would be N log N rather than N squared. So it's a little bit more efficient. Okay, so now let's code it up. And first things first, we just want to get the count of each character. Now we could just iterate through the string with a loop, but there's actually a pretty nice built-in data structure in Python that I usually don't use, but in this case, I think it's fine. Your interviewer probably won't care either. It's just a counter basically under the hood. It is a hash map. And what it's doing right now is just counting each character uh, and returning a hash map for that. So that's what count is. Uh, next thing we want to do is create our max heap, but it's actually being implemented with a min heap in Python. What we want to actually add to the min heap is the count, of course, because that's how we're sorting this, right, based on the count. Uh, so what we're going to do, uh, this is some Python syntax. So don't let it confuse you too much, but basically we're going to iterate through each character, each count in our count hash map. Uh, we're going to iterate through the items of it just to be able to have both of the values just from a loop. And then uh, doing this, we're going to build a list right now. I think this is called list comprehension in Python, uh, but you don't have to do this syntax if you don't want to. I just think it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, and basically for each character and the count of that character, we're going to take that count, make it negative, uh, and that's going to be the first value. And the second value in this pair is going to be the character itself. And basically what this is doing, it's adding a pair of each character with its negative count to a list. Uh, and the reason we're putting the count first is because uh, by default, Python will heapify this based on the first key, the first you know value in this pair. And if there's a tie, it'll use the second value. 
which it doesn't really matter for us if there is a tie because all we care about is the count. Uh, so that's what we're doing now. Uh, and this actually isn't a heap yet. This is just a list of pairs. But to actually turn it into a heap, we can do that like this in Python. Heap Q is basically, I think, a standard collection or standard library type thing in Python. So uh, passing in that list that we just created into this, Heapify will turn it into a heap, and that'll actually run, I believe, in big O of n time amortized. I don't even know if I'm saying that word right. But basically, on average, it'll run in big O of n time. And you can Google that if you don't believe me. And now we're actually going to start basically uh, building our result. We're going to be getting the most frequent uh, character. We're going to create a temporary variable called previous uh, just to store the previous character that we used so that we don't reuse it two times in a row. And we're going to have a result, uh, which is going to be the string that we're actually trying to build, right? So we're going to keep doing this while our max heap is not empty, of course, but and our previous is non-null. And you're going to see why that's important in a second. So remember, each time we want the most frequent character except the previous character uh, from our max heap, right? So we can do that pretty easily with another built-in function, heap q .heap pop uh, from the max heap. It'll pop the most frequent character, and when we pop it, we're going to be getting that pair of values that we add into it, right? So the first value is going to be the count. The second value is going to be the character itself. Okay, so we got the most frequent character. What do we actually want to do with it? Well, every time we get the most frequent, we're adding it to our result, right? So very easy. Just take that character, add it to the result. Now, on the next iteration of the loop, we don't want to reuse the same character, even if it's still the most frequent character. So what we're going to do, we're not going to add it back to the heap just yet. We're actually going to set it to be previous. So we're going to set previous to be uh, that pair that we just uh, popped. Uh, right, we're going to take the count and the character and then set it to previous. But since we just used that character, shouldn't we decrement the count of it by one before we set it to previous? That makes sense to me, so that's what I'm going to do. And actually, we don't want to set it to previous if the count reaches zero, right? Because if it's zero, we're not going to just take this and add it back to the heap. If if the character, you know, we've used all the occurrences of it. So one check we can do before we even set the previous is if count is is equal to zero, is not equal to zero, then we're going to uh, do that, right? And by the way, don't forget our count is actually negative. So I'm kind of stupid for decrementing it by one. That wasn't intentional, by the way. Let me increment it by one. So you could say not equal to zero, or you could even say if it's uh, less than zero, but uh, either way will work. Okay, but what if we just overwrote the previous value, right? What if previous was already set to something else? Then shouldn't we take that previous value and add it back to the heap for future consideration on uh, you know, the future iterations of the loop? Probably we should do that, but only if previous is non-null because of course initially it is going to be set to null. We don't want to add null to our uh, heap. So if previous is non-null, uh, then we're going to say heap Q dot heap push to the max heap and basically just the previous, right? We don't even have to modify it at all. And once we've done that, we can probably go ahead and set previous back to null. And then maybe if, if the next, if the value that we just popped is equal to zero, then previous is going to stay null and that's perfectly fine. Okay, so you might think that we're completely done here, right? We're pretty much handling everything. But my question to you is how do we know if the or the string is invalid, that we can't build the string, the target string that we want to do? How would we know that? Well, let me show you one of the beginning examples that we started with, right? We have three A's and one B. Okay, we use one of the A's, we pop it from the max heap, and then we only have two left, okay? And then this is uh, not in the max heap. Then we pop the B from the max heap. There's zero of them left. Okay, so we don't have any Bs anymore. Okay, but we take the A and add it back to the max heap. Great. Uh, and then we pop it, we use an A. So now we have one A left. Basically, the string we've built so far is A, B, a, but now we have one A and right now it's assigned to previous. So our max heap is actually empty, but we still have values we need to add to the string, but we can't add them because we're waiting. We're going to end up with two A's in a row if we take the previous value and do that. So basically we know that we can't do anything if we get to a point where our max heap is empty and previous is non-empty. So if previous is non-null and uh, max heap is empty. 
And we can do that like this. Yeah, th that's an easy way to do it in Python, or we could just check if this is equal to an empty list. Okay, but if that if that is the case, remember what we want to do. We want to return an empty string. That means we can't find a solution. Okay, so that's pretty much all we're trying to do. Uh, let's clean this up. And so if we don't return an empty string, that means the loop executes and we did find a result and we can go ahead and return that result that we just built. Okay, now let's run the code to make sure that it works. Okay, whoops, I was really dumb at the start. I don't know why I put an and condition. We don't need both of these to be uh, non-null because of course previous is gonna start to be null. Basically, if either of these is true, then we're gonna continue the loop because that means we have some characters that we haven't added to the result yet. But if we find that, you know, this is the case, then we know that there's not a solution. Okay, so now let's run it to make sure that it works. It does, as you can see on the left, it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.